When some people say they grew up in a drug game, they mean it metaphorically. That's not what I mean. My mom spent part of her pregnancy with me in jail on a drug charge. When I was a baby, my uncle used to carry me around and sell drugs out of my diaper. When I was a little kid, I lived in a drug house with my mother in the Jordan Down Projects in Watts until it was raided by the police. So when I say I grew up in a drug game, this shit ain't an allegory. I mean it literally. I grew up in the drug game. My mother, Lydia Garner, was one of eight kids and rebellious from a young age. Though she spent a lot of years living with her deeply religious grandmother, by the time she was 15, she had been kicked out of her house for buying a pair of Levi's 501 jeans. Church rules said girls couldn't wear pants and ended up moving in with her aunt. With weekend-long poker games and people always coming through, drinking and partying, my aunt's house had a completely different vibe, and my mom began to assimilate to that lifestyle. Her cousin, Bertie Joe, was a drug legend, famous in Watts for two things. One, having the only private swimming pool in Watts. And two, creating and controlling the PCP trade in South Central in the 1970s and 80s. Just to be clear, that pool wasn't used for swimming. It takes a lot of liquid to make PCP. As a teenager, my mother started selling PCP for her cousin and witnessed up close the power, influence, and money at the top of the drug food chain. She saw bribes get delivered to judges, policemen, and anyone else whose wills needed greasing. She saw fancy cars, clothes, and jewelry but she also saw the dark side of the game. After a disagreement with her cousin over money, she was almost killed when a man beat her up and tried to give her a hot shot of heroin in her neck to make it look like she overdosed. Thankfully, she's always been a fighter. She fought off that man and had no problem fighting anyone else, man or woman, who might cross her. People didn't expect that from a slim, pretty girl with a big smile. My mom was and still is an alpha, more so than most men. She had a presence, and whenever she came into a room, it was like a spotlight came out of the ceiling, shined down on her. Even if you weren't looking at my mom, you knew where she was. In 1979, my mother had my older sister, Kadisha. But before she was even born, Kadisha's father was shot and killed by the police. A year later, my mommy met my dad. Samuel Corbin, about 15 years older and married with a whole other family in another part of Watts. My dad had a good job at the Department of Water and Power, but he knew the other side as well. He was part of an old-school safe-cracking crew, and his older son controlled the drug game in Watts' Front Street neighborhood. On the undeniable force of her personality alone, I'm sure my mother charmed him from the beginning, because soon after they met, on November 21st, 1980, they had me. Because my dad had another family, there were no pictures of all three of us together in the hospital. No balloons. As soon as she could, my mother took me back to the dope house where she was living and got back to it. Life resumed. Growing up in that house, I had no set rules. No scheduled nap times or square meals. No one to wipe my ass or to tell me to brush my teeth. Life was a random accumulation of events. Even now, I see it more in imagery and scenes than stories. I see myself dropping firecrackers through mail slots with my uncle. I see another of my uncles jumping out of a car and running from the police as we play trash can basketball in the project streets. And I see the police raid that sent my mom to jail. These were the days of L.A. Police Chief Daryl Gates and Operation Hammer, when hundreds of SWAT team cops would brutally raid suspected drug houses in South Central. 